Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to um, join us on this uh, student sharing session. My name is Erica, and then um, with and I'm from the uh, Nanyang Business School. So with me tonight is my colleague uh, Kenny, and also okay. three of our current students from our specialized masters in uh, financial engineering program, who will be sharing more on their student journey with us tonight. Um, we will have the um, Q and A sessions at the end of the sharing mm -hmm. session. So do post them on the um, box if you have any questions. So without further ado, let me pass the baton to Kenny. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. Thanks for joining us uh, for tonight's session. Uh, today's today's session is really more to find out how is it like to be a student of the financial engineering of the Nanyang Business School. So a lot of our students here, uh, they come from all walks of life. They have joined us for a short period of four months since July this year, and they are really at the tick of the action now. Um, so let me just introduce uh, them one by one. So the first up, I have Amanda. Hi, hi, Kenny. Yeah. Uh, Erica, if you don't mind just changing the slides by one. So you have the intro. So, uh, Amanda, would you like to just introduce yourself a bit, uh, your name and your course and what brought you to the financial engineering in MBS? Yeah, sure. So, uh, I'm Amanda and prior to this MFP program, I was actually doing my bachelor's degree in NTU. So, it's also from the Nanyang Business School. And um, back then, I was specializing in banking and finance. So, why I actually decided to pursue MFP is really to be more prepared for quantitative jobs in finance. So for example, derivatives trading, pricing and structuring. And I think being someone who is interested in math, data, programming, I think MFE really balances out between uh, data science and finance. And it really is a multidisciplinary program that combines um, finance, math and computing together. So that was what made me uh, choose MFE over other programs. Okay, great. Next up, I have Boris. Boris? Yes, hi. Yes, hi, I'm Boris and I'm professor from Tsinghua University. And previously, I, actually, I take a kind of the dual degree during my bachelor year is construction management and also business administration. But later, I want to pursue a further master degree and just combine my kind of the engineering background and kind of the business background together. So I think a master of financial engineering will be a perfect kind of the target for my master uh, study. So that, that's why I chose the Master of Financial Engineering for my master degree in NTU, and that's why I'm here. I'm really glad to see you today. Okay, great. Uh, last but not least, I have Jackie. Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, thanks for introducing me. Yeah, so for me, I actually have studied applied mathematics in my uh, undergraduate and after working for some years, I decided to take out this program because I always thought of applying, how to apply analytics, computing, finance, all in one together. And this program actually helped me to combine all this all together and made me understand how the, how the pricing works in the real life and stuff like that. So that's the reason why I took out this program. Okay, great. So you can uh, you can see that our program not only consists of fresh graduates like Boris and Amanda, but also Jackie, who has been working for a few years, who had decided to just join the program because I think the the idea of financial engineering is a bit foreign to a lot of people because it's a rather uh it's sort of a niche field, but it's definitely a field that pays off. There is a lot of interest in this particular field of. Uh, investments especially if you're doing quantitative financial quantitative uh, finance where you are structured products and all so let me just go to the questions that I've prepared for today's uh, today's session so first up I have Boris um, so what made you interested to pursue a master's in Singapore I mean you come from China from Tsinghua one of the top universities in China so what made you want to come to Singapore to pursue your studies Yes, of course. For me, I consider that uh, first, first of all, is a kind of the culture that you are customization. I think that, uh, for instance, for Singapore, it's a really kind of the culture that is similar with China, and that I can really kind of have a coming in life here. I also, undoubtedly, uh, Singapore is a kind of the, you know, the financial center of the whole Asia, even the whole world. If you see that, and uh, considering that right now, if kind of the headquarters, the companies want to have something like a headquarters. 
that in Asia, maybe the Singapore is one of the top choice for them. You know that Tokyo, Singapore, and Seoul, these these cities are among the top choice for them to have their headquarters. So I believe that Singapore will really have a kind of the great outlook for the financial uh, things. And so that's why I really want to pursue a financial engineering pr program here. And that, that's why I choose to do my final selection for my master's degree. Yes, that's my, why I'm here right now. Okay, I mean, just to share, uh, Singapore government is actually one of the forefront, at the forefront of doing quantitative, quantitative uh, developing this field of quantitative trading. I think in terms of our ministry, monetary authority of Singapore, we have actually put in a lot of effort to try to liberalize the market, to try to encourage foreign funds to come to Singapore. So that has actually gained a lot of traction uh, and put us on the map. So if you are a person who is interested to, to pursue finance as a career, why not consider Singapore, especially if you don't come from Singapore itself? So the next question I have is for Amanda. Um, so for Amanda, you have studied at business administration uh, in your undergraduate days. So how do you think that prepared you for your financial engineering graduate studies? So um, when I did my business administration bachelor's degree, I was actually specializing in banking and finance. So mm -hmm. that definitely gave me exposure to the finance language. So knowing all the different financial jargons, financial terms, I think um, it really serves as a good foundation for modules that are finance based. So uh, MFE actually has like modules that are more mathematics based, programming based and finance based. So, so for modules such as corporate finance, derivative securities, they are not new to me. So knowing some of the financial knowledge and then building more in depth on it, it actually is very useful. And for modules that are mathematically based, I think having a good sense of the financial markets or the financial products, they actually help you to um, see how uh, what you learn in class can be applied in real life. So it's actually very easy for you to piece everything together and see it really relates between the formulas that you learn in class as well as how it really is in the actual financial markets. So yeah, and uh, last but not least, in terms of programming, I think it's Programming modules in MFE are really used to solve financial problems. So being able to know um, what are some of the problems out there, what are some of the asset class and the different pricing that can be done, it really makes it easier being to piece everything together. So it all ties in very well coming from a finance background. Yeah. Okay, great. I think that sort of sums up how uh, different aspects and different disciplines. MFE is not just a, dis a single discipline, it's actually a discipline across different sections. So it's combined, is what I would say, a sort of a new field that is a combination of a lot of old fields. So next question I have is for Jackie. I understand that Jackie, you didn't go into, you, the thought of going to financial engineering was something that was planted in you while you were working, not something that you were familiar with before. So what got you interested, what experience got you interested in this field of financial engineering? Yeah. So for me, uh, initially I already have, like say, my degree was in mathematics and I do programming on my own, learn coding on my own. And of course, finance is something very exciting because it's never static, it's always dynamic, it's always changing, there's a lot of data over there. So, and it's also the the reflection of human behavior like when trading happens and stuff like that so the thought of combining all these together has come has come to me but i didn't actually know at that time that there's such a program until i i spoke to someone who actually uh, studied in ntu and he told me that hey, there's actually a, this program that very suit to best suited to what you wanted to do in life and that's the reason why i took out this program and to to understand how I can actually put piece up everything together and to create more values for the society here. Yeah. So this is my idea. Okay, great. I hope today we will have a lot of uh, Jackies in the audience who, after listening to what you say, decide to do the same thing. Okay, next I have a question is for Boris. Um, so how do you think the Masters of Science in Financial Engineering is able to help you prepare for your future career. I mean, you said that you are interested in quantitative finance and all in your career. So how do you think your this particular degree that you are pursuing is able to help you do that? Uh, yes, of course, the first aspect is about the knowledge teaching class, uh, taught in class. When you see that we had a lot of related class related to the real kinds of the financial engineering and kind of financing that can 
you really can you can really apply it in your really working life, for instance, something like equity management, time series, some in modeling, something like this. So this kind of thing that when you get get the interview of those banking companies or something like that, you, they you, they may ask you directly this kind of the knowledge. So getting this kind of knowledge in that class will help you a lot. No, uh, either from the interview or from the working real working environments. Another point I like to mention is that uh, NTU really has a kind of the really kind of good career service that I like to mention here. You know, I've been there it's just several months, and we have already a lot of workshops related to kinds of the uh, career service. Something like teach you how to do your resume, how to just do the interview, what kind of the companies that. Uh, you may just apply for Singapore and for the China, and or what kind of companies are in the timeline or, pipe, or pipeline of the employee employment. So if you are not so familiar with the kinds of the uh, banking and the financial employer market, so it's kind of great to take this kind of a career service in NTU, and you can learn really a lot and benefit a lot from them. So I think that this kind of the two aspects, knowledge learning and that one of the career service will be. Uh, great helpful for your kinds of the career in the future. Yes, that's my point. Okay, great. I think uh, our career services, I see both Amanda and Jackie were nodding their heads when uh, Boris was mentioning about career services. It's something that we are very proud of. It's also something that we believe very strongly in is that our career services office is there to help our students. Uh, I mean, I always joke with our career services office people is that if we, if our students don't look good, we don't look good also. So it's like, uh, in that sense, we want to make sure that our students are gainfully employed and that we believe would be helping the longevity of the program is something that we really strongly believe in. So our GSCDO, Graduate Studies Career Development Office, they start from day one. In fact, before you even start the course, they already started contacting you, reaching out to you to try to see whether how they can help you manage your expectations. So it is very intense, but it is very fruitful. So the next question I have is for Amanda. So I understand that you have started the course since July till now. Um, so it's been a short period, but were there any modules that left a deep impression on you I mean, throughout these four months? I think for MFE, most of the modules are equally rigorous and interesting, but uh, maybe I'll give you an example of a module that really ties in all three uh, math, programming and finance. So there's this module that's called derivative security. So it's a module that really um, emphasizes a lot on mathematical derivation in terms of learning on how to price the product. So in this case, option prices. So uh, besides really knowing all the different models, such as the Black Shows models, there is um, a hinge of economic intuition where you need to know how options work in real life, what are the different kinds of options out there and how they are priced differently. So I think it really uh, ties in very well. So what really left an impression for me is the programming side of things where we actually got to uh, use programming to simulate the different option prices in real life. So uh, besides really just doing the theoretical things of um, derivatives, which is really um, building on what I actually did in undergraduate, I actually got to see how it can go more in depth and how it can really relate to the real world in terms of using different programming tools. So I think it's a really good example um, that really ac accurately reflects how different MFE modules are, where they really tie in all three different aspects. So you don't really see a, prog um, a module that is only finance, only math, only programming. Everything comes hand in hand together. Yeah. Yeah, I think that should be studies in itself, is that you get to see how everything relates to one another and also how it cannot be applied to a real world scenario. I think that is the whole purpose of a good education. So uh, speaking of education and also going back to school, we have Jackie here. So how, I mean, given that you are a bit uh, more mature in your years uh, in this program, I mean, most of a lot of our students are fresh grads. So how has it been, the experience been like for you working with your other course mates? And you know, how has it been like for you? Uh, Jackie, I think you may be muted. Yeah, okay, I just managed to mute myself. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, yes, I am more matured than most of the students in the class, just definitely. But slightly more. Yeah, slightly more. Yeah, I still feel very youth, youthful when I interact with them. Yeah, so it's actually the heart. Uh, age is just a number. Yes. <laughs> so I would say that okay. Um, I'm unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, because 
uh, probably the next batch of students that's coming in, they are not going to do offline anymore. Uh, we do we do have the experience of working offline and online. I mean that I mean uh, we can we do it online, which means the Zoom and stuff like that. We also we need to collaborate, you know, do group projects through the digital way. And also right now we are back to school. We can actually collaborate face to face. We can discuss things uh, easier in terms of face you know, to face interaction. So uh, this is a uh, I would say this can be really one is a lifetime experience where you, you get to have the, the best of both worlds, you know, to interact with st students, uh, my peers and stuff like that. And of course, uh, being more mature than, uh, I mean, being more experienced than, than the peers, I can also share my working experience with them, like what I've encountered during my work life and how is it that they can actually navigate next time when we all go back to the, uh, going to the workforce and stuff like that. So these are some of the interaction that I think that there are values that we I can actually yeah, give it to the, my peers and also to learn from my peers as uh, concurrently yeah okay great uh, I mean just to share our classes uh, although we started in July we unfortunately had to do it on an online format because of COVID uh, so the students here they have actually gone through their first trimester on an online basis so something like what we are seeing now where they are having a lesson where they will see each other online through a video cam, uh, interacting through microphones and all. And then after that, only I think about two, one month ago, then they started having lessons on a physical, on a phys uh, in a face-to-face -face setting. So a lot of the students were actually telling me that they felt very nervous when they went for face-to-face. -face. Reason being is that on Zoom, you can use filters, you can look nicer, but when they see the person in real, then they were like, oh, this is really how you look like. Oh, okay, I see. So yeah, I mean, usually it's a good news. <laughs> but okay, so uh, before I end this session, I will just like everyone uh, to just describe the program experience so far for you in one sentence. So I start with Amanda. Amanda, so could you describe the experience, the program experience in one sentence? Uh, one sentence, I would say that the program is very rigorous, so be prepared for that, but it is intellectually fulfilling. So if that's something that you like, yeah, join MFE. Okay, great. So Boris? Yes, I believe that it's really something that you can learn a lot from it because previously I've never learned really kinds of the mass of financial, financial engineering things before, and I really learned something like beneficial for my career in the future, and that's the point. Hey, Jackie. I would say it's really not for the weak hearted. <laughs> this program is really not for the weak hearted. Yes. <laughs> okay, great. With that, I will open up the QA. Uh, if not, some of them may be not so weak hearted. Hopefully, the people <laughs> who stay are not weak hearted and they are able to join. So, Erica, if you don't mind, could you just read out some of yeah. the more popular questions and then we can try to answer them? Sure. Okay. Um, we I have here a question from Pao Yi. She uh, um, yeah. asked about, uh, can I ask how to fully prepare for the interview? Yeah. Okay. I think this question, uh, I think all three will be able to answer. Maybe you could just share a bit on your own experience when you went through the interview, how was it like for you? So maybe I start with uh, Amanda, you didn't go through interviews, right? If I'm not, if I'm aware. Yeah, okay, just to share, Amanda didn't go through any back doors. Huh? Okay, she went through our IP program, which is the integrated program. So hers is a direct train. That means uh, she went directly from undergrad to our graduate studies uh, directly because uh, her results were so good that we wanted to offer her a master's studies right after that. So maybe I just get Boris and Jackie to just share your own interview experience. So maybe I get Boris to share first. How was your experience like and how do you prepare for it? Uh, yes, actually, it's kind of the, not something I think so complicated for the interview of what I think. Uh, as far as I think that maybe you can prepare something like mathematics things, because uh, some kinds of mathematics problem like linear algebra or calculus will be asked. And I think most of you already already learned a lot of about that in your university life. So uh, just take something, learning about some basic concept, I think just very basic ones. If you learn them and you can pass the interview, 
And the second thing that maybe you just talk about something about yourself, be just frankly, I suppose for us, I think this not never is so complicated for you. you I think we can, you can pass it easily. That's my really my experience. Okay, great. Thanks, Boris. So next I have Jackie, maybe you could just share your own experience or interview experience and how you prepare for it. So for me, it's very similar to what Boris has mentioned. So some basic mathematics, or the questions that you, you need to know how to solve this uh, calculus, linear algebra, this kind of concept and stuff like that. And second thing is that it's all about yourself. Why do you apply for this, this program? And I must emphasize the word why. So why is it that you want to take this program, your, this, uh, your passion? Your, so what's the reason that motivate you to, to apply for this program? I think that is very, very important because if you can't even answer this question, then when you present yourself to the interviewer, they, they can feel it, they can sense it, they, they may not be able to select you for the program. You need to know the reason why you want to take part, take, uh, participate in this program, yes. Okay, great. Uh, I think one common thing that you will see is that we really want to know your motivation for joining the program. We really want to know what's your post-master's career aspirations because um, in some sense, when you are choosing the course and we are, we are choosing you, you are also choosing us to entrust your future with. We want to make sure that the future that you want is something that we can achieve. And that is very important. Um, end of the day, we don't want a program where after you complete it, you say, oh, I, I didn't reach my goals because this was not a program for me. This wasn't the program that helped me reach my goals. That, and that's very important for us. That's why we always take the effort to find out more about the student, to find out what exactly do they want to achieve in order to be able to help them. Okay, next question, Erica. Um, okay, actually, it's from Jeffrey. He's interested in doing it part time, but uh, is it possible for the uh, career service to help with securing an internship? Okay, so maybe I'll answer this because all three of my students are full time students. So uh, for us, okay, one thing is that you have to note if let's say you want to do an internship while doing it part time, then the question is what are you doing for the rest of the day? Because I assume that you're working. Uh, that's why you're taking it part time. If you're not working, then you should take it full time. So if let's say I want to get arrange for an internship for you, uh, the internships are not a um, few hours, they are days jobs, uh, especially the six months internship that comes after our program. Mm. So just to share, uh, we do have the option for our students to go for a, go for a full-time internship after they complete the program for our full-time students. So for our GSCDO, much as we want to help everybody, including the part-time students, we also have to make sure that it's manageable because we have to also answer to our industry partners to make sure that the interns is not going to say, I can come in today, but I can't come in tomorrow. It has to be consistent also. So uh, I would say to a certain extent, you have to manage your expectations as a part-time student on things like internship and things like that. Career, Careers-wise, we will definitely be able to help you. We do have the openings. Um, one thing is that for part-time students, they tend to come with work experience. So the question is, you have to manage your expectations also as to what kind of roles you want and how we can help you. Definitely, we will be able to help. It's just at, to what extent and how much we can help. So hope that answers your question. Um, next, Rika. Okay, um, another one from um, Jing Long is actually to all the panelists, I believe. Mm -hmm. Given your different backgrounds, how are you doing in the program now compared to peers in your cohort? And oh. what is the topic you are currently struggling with the most? Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyone needs to cry yeah. first? <laughs> okay. So anyone wants to volunteer to be the first to answer this question? First? Maybe I get the lady. <laughs> Amanda, maybe, maybe you want first. to just share a bit? Okay. So um, for me, because uh, compared to my friends, right? So I think... I'm doing relatively okay for finance modules. So because I come from financial financial background, so things like um like I mentioned earlier, corporate finance and derivatives, those are still okay. But what I really struggle with is the mathematics side of things. So for example, stochastic calculus and like how my um two other friends in class they mentioned that you really have to prepare well in terms of mathematics. So 
uh, I think that is one module where I have to spend more time on on a daily basis. I have to really um, put in more effort because as compared to peers that come from a mathematical background, this is something that is lacking and um, mathematics cannot really be, you cannot really get good overnight. So you really need to put in the effort every day to practice. Yeah. You need to practice. Uh. Then in yeah. contrast, I have Jackie who came from a math background. So maybe Jackie, you could just share your side of the story. Yeah, so for myself, yes, even though I come from mathematics background, the mathematics over here can be very challenging. So you have to be prepared for it. It's not going to be a, uh, it's not going to be very similar to the mathematics that I used to study. And study. Because now, right now we are talking about uh, everything being very random here. Yeah, so I, of course, if you join the program, you'll know why I, why, what do you mean by very <laughs> random here? Yeah, then and I, I would say that apart from the program itself, the module, right, the, the, what is it that is happening in the real world right now, happening in the real world, is something that I could or we could be struggling with because right now we also want to know what is it that is happening uh, at this moment uh, out there that we will, we will then have to like say, for example, read from new sources, read from those uh, credible websites that actually tell you, oh, so this is what um, happened in the real world and uh, what's the latest development in certain field that is very relevant to us because when we, when we get out to the uh, workplace, then we will have to face this. Um, we have a catch up. We have to do have to do a lot more catch up to the latest development of, of things. Yeah. So that's my my opinion. Okay, great. Then last uh, last but not least, I have Boris. Uh, Boris, would you yes. have anything that you struggle with? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have to say, compared to the previous two guys, I neither being mathematics nor being kind of the finance. So. Everything here is new to me. <laughs> actually, but I think I can I can actually at least follow the whole trend. But I have to say it's a really kind of thing that hard and you really have to learn a lot to come just to devote yourself into it. So I but I really have to say after you kind of learn so much complicated and hard things are really kind of beneficial for your kind of future career because few people will compete with you after you're capturing this kind of the hard knowledge. So Try to learn this hard and try to learn this complicated. That's my suggestion for you. Yeah. <laughs> like what Boris said, financial engineering is a niche field. Um, mm. The careers are very niche, but it's very specialized. You can't just have somebody replace your job role uh, overnight. It has to be somebody who has the same understanding, who has the same discipline. Uh, so it is a very specialized field. So in terms of job security, I would say it's very high. So maybe I get the next question from you, Erica. Okay, um, this is asking about the um, our trimester system um, from Yue Da. He's asking, um, is the trimester system too short to cover any subjects with enough depth? Considering um, the competing local programs are using the uh, semester system. Okay, uh, actually, just to share with you, the trimester system uh, for NTU is pretty common among graduate studies. Uh, even NUS uh, are also using some uh, very something very, very similar in terms of the weeks. Uh, but just to burst your bubble a bit, uh, our MFE program don't use trimester. We use mini trimester, so it's even shorter. So when you thought that the trimester of 13 weeks is short, this is six or seven weeks that we are talking about. So it's even worse. So maybe I get Amanda to just tell, uh, tell you how how is it like for going through this mini trimester system that we talk about. Mm, so for mini term, right? So in each trimester, we actually have two different mini terms. So for the whole, uh, if you take a full-time program, so that means one year, you will have six different mini terms. And then in each mini term, you will take like four or five different modules, which means it's going to be over six weeks. That means first week, you will actually start to learn things on the different, um, different modules. And week six or week seven, that's when you're going to take your finals. So, um, but I think this is not at the expense of the content because content wise, everything is still very, um, 
it's still very comprehensive. They manage to go through a lot of different things. But one thing for sure is that you have to do a lot of self-reading yourself because sometimes when professors, they do um, reference, they will reference to textbooks, textbook A, textbook B. So that's when you have to go back to do your own self-reading such that when you come back for class the next lesson, you can actually move on to the next topic and then um, ask questions if you have. So at times, it's also like a flipped classroom way of teaching. So you cannot really expect everything to be uh, fed to you. You have to really go and do a lot of self-reading. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of a graduate studies is that it's no longer treating you as just a student who is just learning. It's really a lot of self-discipline involved, uh, especially so when this is only a one-year program. It is very short, but uh, as a result, what we expect of the student is a lot of self-discipline for you to be able to learn because we don't compromise on the content. We make sure that all our students, after given the cert, are able to handle their own in the field of financial engineering. So, okay, Erica, next question, please. Okay, um, we have a question from uh, Stephen that is directed to Jackie. So, oh. Jackie, how did you build your profile as a suitable candidate for the program? Um, do you have to take up additional courses to fulfill the prerequisites? And what are the preparations um, you had before applying for the program? Wow. <laughs> this for the prerequisite is compulsory for all students so if i'm i'm supposed you don't mean that kind of prerequisite so uh definitely well okay for, like i mentioned just now like in terms of computing in terms of programming these are things that you cannot be good overnight you really have to learn and to you know, keep practicing and to be to be of a certain standard, right? Then, so that is like, but, I, but it's because yeah, I've been doing this along the way. So I, I didn't like say, oh, because I need to get to this program, therefore I purposefully can build up this. But over the time I learn and you know, I like it. And of course my under, undergraduate degree has helped me, my mathematics has helped me in terms of understanding some of the mathematical concept used uh, in the module. And so, if let's say okay, if you are if you really if you really want to like, say for example build a portfolio so that you can showcase during your interview, I would say that if you are able to pick out a programming language, say for example Python, and because this is all about quantitative analysis and stuff like that, yeah, just put just put do a mini project to showcase that you can you can code in Python, you can download some data from the market, uh, some company stock price and so like and then you do some analysis and then you write a report and then you can actually showcase that you, you are really interested in this field. So the interest to, to showcase the interest through these uh, mini projects can actually may, may be able to help you to, to get into this program. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I mean, just to share, uh, for us, what we are looking out for is definitely that interest in the subject. Because, I mean, end of the day, this is only a one-year program. It's very intense. If you don't have the interest, chances are you will give up very, very easily. That's what. That's why we are looking out for the interest. That's the very first thing. The second one is definitely the talent in mathematics. Because, I mean, end of the day, this is still a very mass-intensive course. If you have taken something that is quantitative-based, that will give us the assurance and the confidence that you'll be able to handle the course load. Okay, next question. Okay, um, next question is by uh, Lina. Hi, may I know how many um, applications this year and how many students we will NTU accept? Uh, maybe this one I can just share a bit. Uh, we just had our first um, application deadline that has ended on the 15th November and till date um, we have received um, more than 100 applications. And for this year, we are going to accept about um, 70 students. So we are looking at a very um, competitive intake rate. Yeah. So, yes. okay, I shall go on to the next question. Okay, this is also posted by um, Ting Long. To all the uh, panelists, did you compare NTU MFE with similar master's programs from NUS? And what made you choose um, NTU? Okay, so maybe Amanda, you don't have a choice, right? Do you? 
you didn't have a choice. <laughs> so maybe I get Jackie and Boris. Uh, Jackie, I think you had, right? Because you were from NUS uh, yourself, and then you probably uh, will also okay. get an alumni discount if I'm not wrong. So if you decide to join NUS, right? So do you compare the two? Oh, so also oh, what I will really get, I, I, didn't, I didn't know about that. <laughs> I didn't know about the, the discount thing, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I I roughly understand that they may have some program that is similar to this program. I it's just that they, their program may may I mean in terms of history, right? They 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 have not been very established compared to this program. I think this program has been around for many many years and it has trained many many competent financial engineers from this program. So I would say that uh, I didn't really consider NUS because of the fact that this program has been there for many years and it has established itself a name. And that's the reason why I consider NTU MFE. The legacy, basically, yeah. the legacy of it. Yeah. Um, Boris, did you make any comparison between us and the one in the Clemency, uh, this place called NUS? Ah, yes, actually, um, no, I had, I didn't apply for a US MFB, actually. Uh, I applied for some of the American program, but, but for the compare, of course, there's some compar comparison between the US and the kinds of the NTU before my application. I think that because I really want to do that myself into something like qualitative and something like mathematics or program work, and I think NTU for this part can give me a kind of the really a good side for the kinds of the quantitative thing or modeling thing that I think to this kind of the, the, uh, the related kinds of the hard work in this kind of, in this aspect. And another thing is that I have a discussion uh, with the NTU's manager here and I really understand the career service here and it's really attractive for me at that moment. So all, all these are kinds of the holistic one that from the beginning to the end. And because at that time, I actually knew a bit about the whole financial market, but after this kind of the whole workshop or interview, this things like this, I really learned a lot about this. So I think the career service is another point that attracted me most for choosing you in that. Okay, I think one, one word of advice is really, um, in terms of knowledge, I would say that it will be the same. I mean, one plus one equals to two, whether is it the NTU, NUS, or University of Timbuktu, they will all be the same. Question is really what are the other uh, services that are involved, things like career services, as what Boris has mentioned, yeah. the legacy, uh, the fact that, I mean, end of the day, when you look at it, we are a program that has been around for more than 20 years. We have trained a lot of financial engineers. They regularly do come back to contribute back to, the, to, this, uh, to this field and to the school. So what happens is that when they are in the position of hiring, they will be familiar with our students. They will be really more willing to give a chance to our students. And that really is something that a good university and an established university is able to offer. So next question. Um, okay, the next question I have is from Edwin. He's asking if there's any um, scholarship available for international students. Okay, we do have, uh, this one I'll answer. <laughs> okay, so we do have merit-based scholarship, which means that it's based on your results, it's based on uh, how well your profile is, we do have. Uh, but bear in mind that these are not full scholarships, so you still have to, uh, you still have to bear some of the costs. Uh, I would say that a typical scholarship uh, subsidizes about 5 to 15%, depending on, uh, depending on your profile, uh, how suitable you are. So it will be a partial scholarship for international students. Um, for, for Singaporean students, we are more, a bit more generous. So especially if you're alumni, so yeah. Okay, next mm. question. Um, okay, the next question is actually from um, Ye An. He's asking, is the six months full-time internship available for international, international students? Yeah. Okay. So the answer is yes uh, for this. Uh, so this uh, this six months internship, right? What happens is that when as an international student, when you do come over to join us in Singapore, 
you'll be given a visa that is actually more than your course length. So which means that you are actually mm -hmm. able to um, stay in Singapore for a much longer period of time. This additional time is actually allowing you to find a job, to, uh, to do an extra internship and things like that. Hopefully that converts into an employment pass. So long story short, Yes, as an international student, you are still eligible for the this uh, optional internship. Um, it's just that during in January, uh, all students, including the Singaporeans, need to inform our GSCDO that you wish to take up this internship as an option. All right, next. Mm. Okay, this is from Tian Jun. So to all the panelists, how do you manage to keep up with your coursework and find internship at the same time? I assume both are very time consuming. So um, out of the three of you who are doing any part-time internship, is there anyone taking any part-time internship at this moment in time? Don't think so, right? Don't think you all are taking it at this time. Yeah, so I'm, maybe I'm taking, I'm, I'm taking oh. my bed, but I'm taking it remotely. I'm not sure in what the situation is uh, at this time. But I have mm. to say that my working load is not so high. So I'm not sure if you really want to take the kinds of the I work in all the kind of thing. And, but I think that for the, inter for the kind of internship, uh, for instance, you take your two days each week, and then you can maybe de just devote yourself all the times into the learning. Of course, if you have, if you want to do in the internship and the kinds of the uh, uh, coursework at the same time, it will be much harder for you, but you can, you can make a choice depending on yourself. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the things that we have an understanding with any company that's offering our students part-time internships or even full-time internship is that school comes first. School work still comes first. It's the understanding that we have with all these industry partners. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to let our students go for these internships. So um, you have to manage your time. Obviously, there will be some things that you have to give up. Uh, I heard sleep is usually given up in a lot of cases. So yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, all right. Um, the next question is from Indira. Um, hi, what are the exact um job profiles or roles or career that you are you guys are seeking to achieve after um taking this program? Okay, so maybe I get Amanda. Amanda, you seem to know what role you want. So maybe I get you to ask first, and I'll go to the two gentlemen. Um, for me, I'm not really uh, particularly locked down into one particular role. So some of the few roles that I am currently applying for my graduate, uh, when I graduate, um, include wealth management. So for wealth management, it really, uh, there are really, really different types of roles. So the roles that I'm applying is investment consulting. So that's when you have to know the different asset classes in order to advise your uh, clients, so you are the ones that will be supporting the relationship managers. So you were the you will be the ones who know the different asset classes uh, best. So basically, you are like a product specialist, and then you have to give um, diagnosis for your clients in terms of their portfolio. So um, there is the other path which I'm also open to, which is data science and finance. So because being someone who really likes programming, and I think data science is a role that really interests me as well. So I think this actually shows that doing MFE, it doesn't really, uh, it is a very specific program, it's very niche, but it doesn't really restrict or limit you to a particular job. So if you want to go into the data science role in banks or in financial institutions, MFE is also a good choice. Or if you really want to be into investment products or being a product specialist or being a quant also. So I think it really opens up a lot of opportunities in terms of the very niche and specialized roles, yeah. Okay, um, Boris, if you'd like to weigh in on this, uh, like what roles do you aspire to? Ah, uh, yes, uh, for me that I, of course, want something that is related to count. So I think that maybe the top part of my choice will be something like quantitative trading, but I also think it's something work like the, you know, quantitative analysis or risk management, that kind of work, so they are not directly uh, getting in touch with the money. They have a lot of kinds of the, quantitative work in this and they kind of them make me relatively more competitive in this part with my MFA knowledge. So that's kind of the, my job seeking for the future parts. So maybe the analyst and, and um, quantitative analyst and the kinds of the uh, risk management will be the two main parts of the answer. Okay. Um, 
Okay. Um, then Jackie, uh, Rose, are you interested to pursue? I think Amanda and Boris has mentioned a fair bit of really, you know, that, with that, that the skills that we learn is really transferable across many different roles that, that requires our skill set. So I would say that uh, apart from what they have mentioned, not, not to forget that the technology sector in the finance sector, the technology aspect of the finance sector, right? They mm. may also require the skill that you go through when you go through this program. So for example, if, a, if the banks or the trading firms or the hedge fund, they are using some technology, they are using some software to model their product, you know, the financial product, and they come to the software companies that provide this software. Oh, can you model this for me? Can you, can you give me a, a program that can model a, a, a certain exotic options, for example? That's where if you're hired by all these software provider, you can provide your knowledge in terms of helping the company to build up this program for the banks, for the hedge fund, for the trading firms to use. So this is also one aspect that you must not forget that your skills is very useful here. Yeah, correct, correct. This reminds me of that story of how when somebody, uh, when there's a gold rush, the person who earns the most is actually the person selling the shovels and the and the pikes and everything because everybody is going to buy from them so it's the same idea here so next question i have erica okay i think i can answer this this is from ming tan okay um when is the earliest you can apply for these graduate studies while you are still in an undergraduate and also um is gmat a compulsory um before uh, to before applying so basically ming tan um if you're in your final year um, you can actually um, start to explore um, taking up this program. Um, our intake is in July every year. So as long as you graduate before that, um, you would be able to uh, take up this course. And GMAT is a requirement in this um, program. Yeah, so next I shall go on to... Um, oh, there I is a question. I think GRE is also accepted. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. GMAT and GRE. Yes. Thank you so much, Boris. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next, I have a question from Xiang Chen. Um, that is actually for Amanda, right? Were you, um, uh, or rather, do you struggle in the mathematics courses when you compete with the peers who come from a science background? And what do you think of the financial courses that's provided by the uh, MFE? So um, firstly, for mathematics, definitely I struggle more and I don't know about the rest, but definitely I see myself struggling more than them, having to put in more effort. And so before classes, I have to read through the different slides first to really understand what things are before going for class. But I think um, that's really the nature of things because everyone comes from different background and being in a multidisciplinary program, you can't really be good in everything because if you are, then this program is really not for you because you already know the things. So to me, mathematics is tough. So that is definitely one side where I really um, put in a lot more effort. So in terms of finance, sorry, Erica, can you remind me of the question again? Oh, okay, hold on. So let me just uh, refer mm. it back. Um, oh, okay. Uh, what do you think of the financial courses that's provided by the MF MFE? Okay, so if you are coming from a undergraduate program that is specializing in finance, then these finance mods in MFE, it really builds upon the foundation on this. So in undergraduate, for example, you will learn simple pricing equations on how to price the different problems. Mm -hmm. But when you come into MFE, everything is stochastic. So in a sense, where, like what Jackie mentioned, everything is random. So the equations are different. You are, you are starting to get more in depth. Um, everything is more complicated right now and then you will start to realize that um, what they taught you in undergraduate is really just on the surface so this MFE program it really drills down all the way to all your different technicals and I think the finance programs taught by the professors in NTU are really quite well well taught so some of the uh, professors they have actually taught me in my undergraduate studies as well and they brought the class um, quite well 
So I think in that sense, I really don't have to put in a lot of um, worries in terms of finance. So that's how I actually focus more on mathematics. But um, don't worry, because like in MFE, the classmates are all very helpful. So if you really have any problems, um, they are willing to help you as long as you're willing to reach out. Yeah. Actually, that's the reason why we brought in Jackie. Jackie is able to teach the rest of the class mathematics also on a <laughs> daily basis. <laughs> Okay, so next question that we have. Okay, um, the okay, this question is from Jinglong that is directed to Boris, right? Um, compared to your peers from Tsinghua, do you believe you have an comparative advantage from taking this um NTU masters? Do you think this uh, program prepares you well for a career in Chinese business? Uh, actually, I think it's quite well. So uh, at least for some parts, for instance. Mathematics is all correct all over the world. So, uh, for instance, if you just apply for the Zhongjing or Huatai, some, some companies like that, they will ask you something about the computer programming, modeling, or something like uh, mathematics. So, preparing things like this, getting learning things like this will, of course, help you get in the interview, uh, interview opportunities, or kinds of the things that are really helpful for you. And, of course, I think that a master degree in NTU is also a beneficial. As is a world well known university. So, of course, I think that it's very, very, it will be really helpful for me. Okay. okay. So, uh, I think we can do another two or three, maybe mm. three more questions. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. Uh, I have a question from um, uh, uh, Savita. Okay. I don't have former. Act academic programming experience but i have substantial professional programming experience does that count towards programming experience okay maybe i just answer this a bit and then maybe i get jackie because you come from you also self-taught self-taught your programming right if i'm not wrong so uh for us i mean the end of the day uh we are looking out for the interest uh in in financial engineering and mathematics and all. Programming is sort of an extension of mathematics too, if you really want to put it that way, because it's talking about logics, it's talking about different types of uh, uh, different types of sets and things like that in order to be able to come up with a logical, mind, a logical map and flow. So end of the day, if you have done programming, whether is it on an academic basis or in a, in a professional setting, they are still banking on the same skills. They are still testing you on the same kind of thought process. So it wouldn't make a difference to us. So, but if let's say you have done it academically, you have the search to prove it. If you have done it professionally, now that's the question is like, how do you prove it? If you have done work, like what Jackie has mentioned, you should show it because those will be really good ways for us to really look at you as a, as a more holistic candidate. So maybe Jackie, you can just give a bit of advice like, like the professional aspect of programming that you went through and how that uh, was shown basically. Okay, so from my experience, the, in terms of programming, let's say if you want to showcase, I would say that you can publish some article regarding uh, what you have done over the, the mini project that I mentioned just now with, with the code that uh, in the article to showcase what you have gone through. Of course, uh, because you mentioned professional code experience in coding, then you should have heard of this thing called GitHub and stuff like that. So you can actually upload your, your code into GitHub to showcase the, the fact that you have all these experience and stuff like that. So I would say that, uh, let's say if you are not like certified, officially certified that you know how to code, you, are, you, you really have the professional experience, then there are things like, because over here we, we use a lot of different programming language. We use R, we use Python, we use C. We are being taught a lot of different language languages. So really programming language is just a language. It, you cannot take away the fact that you you are what you are doing is to model, to write out the algorithm. It's just really different language, yeah, per se. So it's okay that you do not have the the academic type of uh, certifications rather and rather you have the professional experience okay great so uh, i think we can do about two two more questions maybe so okay. erica yeah um 
there's another one from Brandon. He's asking what are the topics you would recommend reading up ahead of this program? Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> okay, so maybe I just ask, uh, answer a bit of those questions. I think definitely your maths, uh, your stochastic, you're talking about your linear algebra, uh, things like that. Those are the things that you really need to revise if you have not been in touch with those subjects for a long time. Um, so you have to make sure that you're familiar with these subjects because they will be tested. Those are the basis of financial engineering in a lot of sense. Programming things like, for example, your C++, R, those are, uh, those are things that you probably would have to have some basic understanding to give yourself a bit of a, uh, to give yourself a better time when you are taking all these subjects. Because if the first lesson is only six weeks, if you think about it, six weeks is a very, very short time. And if you are taking lessons right on the first week and you are struggling with the basics, how much time do you have to catch up with the rest of the class? You won't have much time before it's the next module. So just try to read up on those. Uh, maybe Amanda, you could just share a bit on what other things you can do to read to prepare yourself. So I think um, assuming if you don't have a strong background in mathematics, one area which you really can read up on and prepare is probability and statistics because that is really the foundation of all the math courses there that is um, in MFE. So uh, thinking back on all my different math modules, they are really based on the foundation of probability and statistics. So you really need to know all your statistics well, all the distribution, things like that. So that is really the math part. And for programming, I would suggest you to um, not just read up, but uh, be well-versed in one language. So you don't have to read up on R, C++, and Python, because if you only know like the basics of all the different languages, it's really going to get tougher for you when it goes like um, very in-depth. So I would say you suggest, uh, select one language, and I would recommend Python. So you get good with all the logic, you understand all the logic, but then when um, the course requires you to do C++ and R, you, it will be easily transferable if your logic is there. So if you know the different logic of the language, it's actually just a different language. You just need to transfer the logic to another language. So that's how I really uh, prepared for it. So I, I also studied Python myself, and then I found it quite easy to transfer to R and C++. And for finance, I would say definitely read up on all the different financial terms, financial jargons, because sometimes in class, um, these terms are used. And then, for example, um, discount factor, this kind of things, these terms, they really are used in class and the professor don't have the time to explain every single finance terms for you. So being um, more of getting exposure to the finance language will also help a lot so that you can keep up with the class. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think uh, end of the day, you let's say you are good with all the subjects, right? You have an easier time adapting to the classes because you're going to learn everything that is combining all this. Anyway, if you're talking about programming and all, there's a lot of online resources. Unlike um, unlike when you want to learn something about five or six years ago, now you've got a lot of resources online. YouTube is one of the best ways to learn a lot of these things. Uh, you have Udemy, you have Code Academy. They are very good resources. So I would I highly encourage you to at least go and take a look at all those. Yeah. Okay, uh, next, last question, yeah, I guess. I think, yeah, I think we have the, uh, time for the last question. Um, to to all the uh, panelists, are you all planning to take up the programming courses from the CMU? And what are the factors that influence your decision? Okay, so uh, just to share, right now this year, we actually do have the option for you to opt out of the CMU if you choose not to. Uh, in place of it, we do have uh, courses run in NTU to help you. So there are some students who decide not to go to CMU uh, for their own reasons. Like, for example, maybe they are already in the final phases of getting a job and therefore they feel that staying in Singapore might give them an advantage. So, yeah. So uh, for the three of you, anyone is opting out of CMU? Okay. Anyone? Okay, so maybe I just get all three of you to just share your thoughts on the CMU portion. Um, is that the question, uh, Erica? Just to confirm yeah. the question. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, what are the CMU. factors that that influence you to um pursue the CMU route? Okay, so maybe I get Boris first, then go to uh, Amanda, then Jackie. Okay, Boris. 
Yes. Oh, for uh, first, I'd like to say that of course I really want to CMU class to be taught virtually. That's that's my kind of the point I really want uh, wants to because you see America have a really bad situation of COVID nineteen. So if it's done virtually, that is pretty good for me. And for me, if I take kind of the CMU class, it's a kind of the computational finance. So more programming knowledge will be taught in this part. Of so I think that's really beneficial for me. As you know, more more computer programming, more kinds of the um, more better for me. Right? That's kind of thing. So I think learning this can help me get much more about the computer science, computation science of the side of the kind of the financial side. So that's why I say I kind of really want to take the CMU courses, but I really want to take it virtually. Yes. Okay, uh, Amanda. I think for for me, I um, CMU it really stands out because uh, back then there was a question asking on the difference between NTU MFE and NUS MFE. So NTU's MFE we actually collaborate with CMU, so it's a really good opportunity for you to learn from uh, experienced professionals, not just in Singapore but in the states where uh, financial engineering is also very a very popular subject there. So. I think being able to learn from a very prestigious university in terms of financial engineering, it's it doesn't just um give you the knowledge and the programming the programming skills that's needed for the job, but it also lets you see uh the difference in the way that things are taught or some of the different perspectives that the prof uh, professors there can give it to you. So these are not just gonna so for example when you go for job interviews, these are experiences that come to your story. So I think um skills aside as uh, Boris has just mentioned earlier it really adds on to your whole um, master's experience and it's something that you can share about when you graduate instead of say um, NUS MFE. Okay sure uh, last but not least Jackie. Uh, so Boris and Amanda has mentioned a lot of why we wanted to go to CMU and that's precisely the reason why this program was chosen uh, initially because we there is a co collaboration with CMU in, in terms of giving a holistic learning of how things are being done not only in Singapore but also in the state. Unfortunately, to, right now we are having a COVID so we may not know whether we will be there by next year. So let, let's just say we put this aside, okay, um, let, if you were to go to this website called QuantNet, they actually rank all the all the the US university that provide financial engineering and CMU uh, in 20 that this ranking, a recent ranking, they are ranked second. So you can see that they really provide a lot of as they, they will be providing us a lot of this uh, as knowledge and experience on how we can actually do computational finance. And on top of that, uh, knowledge apart. Uh, aside that like what Amanda said is also the experience you have you do have the overseas experience the learning the, the how you the culture that you can actually interact with them and, stuff, and that can be a very valuable to your potential employers okay great so um just to share 2021 uh, CMU is still actually the second Okay, hopefully they will get first very very soon. So uh, with that, we end the presentation and thanks for joining us for today's session. Uh, if you do have any questions, do reach out to us via our email mfe at ntu.edu.sg. If you visit our website, you'll also be able to submit your CV and also to arrange a coffee chat with us to find out more about the course. And hopefully we'll see all of you in NTU very very soon and uh, do join us. Uh, for our next event and also do join us if you are play, submitting an application. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Jackie, you. Amanda, Boris, and Kenny. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.